battling more than 55 major wildfires out west. Just take a look at the Beckworth Complex fire. This is in Northern California. It's just one of several... Leah Luciano, thank you for that. More than 55 major wildfires out west. Just take a look at the Beckworth Complex fire. This is in Northern California. It's just one of several blazes destroying homes and forcing evacuations. Fueling these flames, extreme drought and intense heat. Lilia Luciano is in Palmdale, California with more. Lilia, good evening. Good evening to you, Errol. Look, the heat is brutal. Where I am in Palmdale, north of Los Angeles, right now it's 106 degrees. It's bone dry. And as you can see, it's also windy. All of that together making conditions in the West perfect for devastating and also deadly wildfires. Wildfires in the West exploded overnight, forcing evacuations and turning deadly. Two Arizona firefighters were killed Saturday when their plane crashed while surveying flames. In Oregon, the bootleg fire is now the biggest wildfire in the country, and California's Beckworth Complex fire has doubled in size daily for the past three days. Extreme heat and drought are fueling the flames. More than 30 million people are under excessive heat warnings and advisories, with several cities hitting record triple-digit temperatures. <laughs> Washington and Oregon set new emergency orders mandating access to shade, water, and breaks for anyone working outdoors after an Oregon farm worker died. Also distressing farmers, the heat torching their crops. We'll be down on the farm 20% in production across the board. Jeevan Brar and Paul Sangha in Washington are fighting against the heat to save their harvest. Their berries were nearly baking at one point, more than 120 degrees hot. It created a really difficult situation. How unexpected was this? This is probably the best growing year that I've seen. Personally, with this heat wave, I do the damage it did. It not only did it damage this year's fruit, but it also damaged the, the new shoots for next year. And there's a ripple effect to that. The longer this heat wave lasts, the more damage it'll do to future crops, not to mention the droughts it's prolonging and the fires it's fueling. Errol. All right, Lilia Luciano, thank you for that. country reeling after the assassination of its president. Desperate scenes, shortages of food and fuel. People lining up when they hear about a station with gas using any kind of container they can find to haul it away. ABC's Marcus Moore is in Port-au-Prince for us again tonight. Tonight, the FBI and Department of Homeland Security are sending agents to Haiti to help investigate the assassination of President Jovenel Moise. Authorities have arrested at least 20 people, including two Americans. According to the acting prime minister, Claude Joseph, 28 foreign mercenaries carried out the attack. 19 of them are from Colombia. My only and ultimate goal is to give justice to President Jovenel Moise. Since Wednesday's attack, the city of Port-au-Prince has wrestled with returning to normal. But normal has long been a struggle here. Desperate scenes like this one have become increasingly common as the country faces economic turmoil. Haiti has been in the midst of a gas shortage, and it leads to scenes like this. People lining up for fuel uh, because the opportunity to get gas is spontaneous. Soleil is a father of two. He tells me you have to fight to find gas. Helen John was on her way home from church when she saw the station was selling fuel. So she stopped to fill up her two gas cans, and she says she was hurt by the news of the assassination. This was only something you read about in the history books, but now you all are living this. She says this is something she could have never imagined. Lindsay, we are told the U.S. teams that are on the ground right now assessing the interim government's request have met with the prime minister and they will brief President Biden once they get back to the U.S. as the investigation into this brazen attack continues. Lindsay. Marcus, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out. A display of anger and frustration in the streets of Cuba on Sunday. Thousands of anti-government rallies in large cities and small towns across the island of 11 million people. Citizens calling for an end to the decades-old communist dictatorship. Protesting the island's dire economic conditions, food shortages, and the slow pace of COVID-19 vaccinations. In one area of Havana, protesters clashing with police. Elsewhere, they chanted repressors at riot police. Cubans voicing anger over the repression of civil liberties and the handling of the pandemic, amid what many are describing as the country's worst economic crisis in decades. 
President Miguel Diaz-Canel blaming the United States for the unrest and calling on supporters to take back the streets during a nationally televised speech Sunday afternoon. Social media still relatively new in Cuba, helping to fuel the demonstrations. The hashtag SOS Cuba taking off on Twitter and shared by celebrities. Here in the U.S., solidarity protests spilling into the streets of Miami and other cities across the country. Every, everyone in Cuba is go out on the street. Everybody in Cuba uh, asking for the freedom. U.S. officials expressing support for the Cuban protesters and a member of the U.S. State Department tweeting, we stand by the Cuban people's right for peaceful assembly. We call for calm and condemn any violence. To make matters worse, the government cut off the Internet in Cuba yesterday. And this, of course, made it harder for the international community and those living in more remote parts of the island to really know what was happening. So right now, there seems to be more optimism in Miami than in Havana. On the ground in Cuba, there, there are mixed emotions. Sources I've spoken to say that they're hopeful that this could be the beginning of the end and that with enough international attention and pressure, it's possible that things could change. Back to you guys. Mm. All right, Morgan, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, Shalom. First and foremost, I love to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Shimei Shai, which that are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of a Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, who is a so called black man. Yahweh by Shimei Shai brought them to all the Akim out there that's pushing the truth and sincerity, while Yahweh by Shimei Shai brought them to all the elders out there who labor in the truth and taught us the truth. All right, you can see, uh, most eyes having different parts of the earth being turned up, right? You see Cuba, right? You see the Haiti, and also in California with these uh wildfires. And in discussing this with a brother, we're really in a prelude of Jacob's trouble. That's really what we're in a prelude to, which I'm going ahead and get that. Because as you can see, who are the main ones catching hell? Israel. Or you have Israel catching hell in America, and you have Israel catching hell in the islands. And that's why when people always scoff and asking, well, well, why do I have the tow Trump chart centered uh, over here only? Duh, dummy. Because this is where the great deliverance is going to be at on the Western Hemisphere. And this is where mostly all the hell all the all all the turmoil is going to be at for the most part this is jeremiah 30 and 6 ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child wherefore do i see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness yeah jeremiah is asking like damn he's, he, he's like he's like damn like are you seeing men are, are, are men pregnant? Are men I'm delivering children? That's what Jeremiah's asking because that's how much a pain and suffering is going to be happening in Jacob's trouble. It's going to be a lot of hell. Verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And really, those who are going to be saved out of it are the remnant. <clears throat> this book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1 it says and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble and what's that Jacob's trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time so which this is a direct precept to Matthew 24 and what this is saying is this time of trouble is going is going to be the worst uh, type of trouble in history. This is going to be the worst time in history. Prior to these different, you know, uh, difficult times that has approached the planet Earth, Jacob's trouble is going to top it off. Jacob's trouble is going to be times that by a thousand. It's going to be the worst historic memory in the Earth, Jacob's trouble. That's how terrible it's going to be. It says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Yes, it's thy people shall be delivered. So what is the Christian church talking about? The Israelites will be delivered, but 
specifically what it says everyone that shall be found written in the book yeah everybody that is found written in the book which is dealing with the 144,000 and then you have the one third understand so this is what we're seeing we're seeing a preface to to uh Jacob's trouble you got you got the tribe of Manasseh down there in Cuba you know they're blaming America for all the uh tribulations that they're going through and they're right but really ultimately it's because we sinned against the heavenly father so all these th all, all all these events these tragic events that's happening down in Haiti uh down in Cuba hey, is is ultimately judgment cuz we sinned against the heavenly father but this is the book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 9. It says, death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked. And for their sakes came the flood. So you see that all these things that was listed in verse 9, all those were created for the wicked. And as you can see. This is what's uh, uh all, all these things, all these things that Sirach just listed in verse nine, is happening down in Haiti, down in Cuba, and in uh California and um AZ. A lot of death, a lot of death is happening. You don't think people are dying from these wildfires? A lot of people, uh, especially when I was watching the news about Canada, a lot of these people are dying because of the uh heat wave that's happening. Right? You have bloodshed, you got a lot of death going on. Like a lot of people that I had went to school with, that I went to high school with, um, that I grew up with in the neighborhood, played played uh, basketball with them, been at the uh, houses. A lot of them are dying. The most sides putting a lot of them to death. Like a few uh, days ago, there's uh, on this one J, there's one Israelite that I had went to high school with. Man, he got shot at 27 times. 27 times. See? So bloodshed, strife, and sword, which what's a sword? Anything that's used to uh kill. Calamities. Calamities is happening. Famine. They said that these wildfires can cause a food uh, can cause a food shortage. And then you have food shortages happening in Haiti, also in Cuba. Tribulation, they're going through tribulation. And the scourge. See that all those things were created for the wicked. But the righteous, the righteous aren't going to face those things. The righteous are, are going to be protected, like the scripture says. But two thirds of our people, they're going to be subject to this. And all these things are the spirit of vengeance, which I'm going to go ahead and get in a, in a previous chapter. Sirach 39 and verse... 28 it says there be spirits that are created for vengeance which in their fury lay on sore strokes in the time of destruction they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them now now these spirits that are created for vengeance really really these spirits are the angels uh on the on the right hand and also the uh left hand angels because you read in the book of samuel you read how uh, um, the Heavenly Father had a death angel annihilate thousands of Israelites. I forgot how, I forgot how many Israelites died in that one day, but it was thousands of Israelites. The Most High let the angel put to death, and that appeased that really appeased the wrath of the Heavenly Father. That really calmed the Lord down. The Lord was so hot, He had the angel going on rampage. He had to tell the angel to stop. Heavenly Father was appeased. And these and, and, and the angels, they put the spirit. They put the spirit on these different people to execute these uh vengeance. Let me go ahead and get uh Psalms. Psalms chapter 78 and 49. It says, He cast upon them the, the he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them so you see everything that's going on around the earth the angels are doing it the angels are doing everything 
You read in uh, Isaiah the 13th, it says the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle, which we can go into the word for muster. It means to oversee, right, to control. And the Lord of hosts, the host is dealing with the angels. So the angels are the ones that are overseeing everything. You read that in Revelation, the seventh chapter. It says, hurt not the earth or touch the grass. Talking about these different spirits or those angels until until the, until the uh, elect are sealed until the seal, until the name of the heavenly father is sealed in the foreheads of the elect so these angels are really the ones that are doing damage damage out here severe severe damage so now let's go back to Sirach 39 and 29 it says fire and hell what's happening fire and then you just had some hell you just had some hell not too long ago. It says, and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance, teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. So if you're wicked, hey, man, you you have rude awakening. You have uh, you have a number of. You have a number of tribulation that's going to come to you. But the Heavenly Father is always going to have his remnant protected. But let me go ahead and get Second Ezra's. Got protests going on, shortages going on. We're literally in the last in the last days. We're literally in the final stretch. The Heavenly Father is about to make his return by way of his, his angels and by way of his um his son, Yahweh Shai. So the second verse is nine and one. And it read. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time di diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world, which he made, which the heavenly father is visiting the world. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and upwards of the people in the world, which that's what we're seeing, right? Thousands protest pro protests in Cuba demanding food, medicine, freedom. See, look at this: Cuba streets filled with protesters for second night. This is these are these are upwards of the people. These are upwards. Continuing on, it says, "Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High speak of those things from the days that were before thee." Even from the even from the beginning, why? Because it says in Isaiah forty six and ten. Let me go ahead and get that. Isaiah forty six and ten. It says, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, "My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure." So you see, so everything that you see that's happening right now, it was already declared from the beginning. So the end. The end of the of this age, the end of the world, Israel ruling, having slaves, us going, us going into captivity. All that was declared from the beginning. The Heavenly Father already had that written out. Let's see here. All right, so that's it on that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump to verse 15. I mean chapter 15. The second verse is 15. And I'm going to start at verse five. It says, behold, save the Lord. I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction. That's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing. Sword, famine, death and destruction It's only going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. And if you're Israelite saying that you hope things are going to get better, you're of the world. You're of the world. We want things to get worse. Now, Nakawam, why would you say that? Why would you want things to be worse so that we can get so we can get the hell up, get the hell up out of here? That's why. That's why I want things to get worse. Because the more worse America get, the closer our kingdom is. Understand that. Second is the sixth chapter, and the ninth verse says, "For Esau's Esau's the end of the world." And terrors 
have to come upon this place so that this place can come to an end and so that we can rule. You don't want to rule? You want to you, you want to keep trying to find ways to make money? Who the hell want to who the hell want to stress about trying to find different ways to make money? You tired of not having a woman like, you know, you know, a lot of you brothers, a lot of brothers always complaining about women, right? Ailments, different things like that. See? So we got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. A lot of you brothers, you can't even see your children. Right? You want to see your kids, right? You got you got guys like me. I don't have I don't have any children. I want some children. Damn sure not having it here. I want I want the children in the kingdom, right? So all your heart's desires, everything that you desire to have, we got to get the hell up out of here so we can have those things. So verse six. Now, why is the Lord bringing the sword, famine, death, and destruction? For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And their hurtful works are fulfilled, especially from our people. Now, on top of the earthquake that hit Haiti some years ago, what had been like 11 years now? Here, the Heavenly Father having the Haitian president get uh, earth. And now you have turmoil, food shortages, and, and, a, few, and, a, and a fuel shortage, oil uh, shortage. Now you hastens you, you get you get jacked up a whole lot. Now why is that? That's because of your transgressions. This book of Malachi, chapter two, and verse seven, it says, "For the priest's lips should keep knowledge." Now who are the priests? The Levites. This is what the Lord. This this is who the Lord is speaking to in Malachi, the second chapter, on the Levites. This is for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. So now we're going to jump down. Stop here. Let's see. Yeah, verse three. So now verse three, it says, behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast. And one shall take you away with, with it. So that's why you have um, the Levites. They down there eating mud cakes. From the earth and that's dung. See. So that's why the child of Levites catching all catching all that hell. And Manasseh, which um, Manasseh is the uh, tribe of Joseph. You belong to Joseph. You and Ephraim. Manasseh is the big brother and Ephraim is the uh, little brother. You know Manasseh is down there worshiping Cesare uh, Boger. So the Heavenly Father is jacking your ass up too. You're polluting the earth because you're God's chosen people. You worshiping these idols. Uh, the Haitians, you went to that voodoo. Most high is jacking your ass up, and it's time to repent because clearly we're at the end of this thing. Now, second, I just 15, and I'm gonna jump down and all praises to Yahweh by Shim Shah because we need more uh death and destruction so that we can get up out of here, man. Verse 13 says, They that till the ground shall mourn. For their seed shall fail through the blast and the hail and the fearful constellation. That's what's happening. They said that. Let's go back to it. For next year, the, the new shoots for next year is true, but it also damaged the, the new shoots for next year. Uh, I've seen personally with this heat wave, I do the damage it did. It not only did it damage this year's fruit, but it also damaged the, the new shoots for next year. And there's a ripple effect yep. to that. Yep. Damaging the crops. These uh these the, the heat waves and the wildfires, which will cause what? Inflation. 
all man, everything is pointing towards a hyperinflation. Which the other day I was at the grocery store. I lied you not. I bought five things and it came up to over thirty dollars. Dealing with food. <laughs> so it's getting real, man. Times are times are definitely gonna get hard. And we need the Heavenly Father on our side. We don't want him to be against us. We don't want the Heavenly Father to be as an enemy. But now verse 16, it says, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. Now, what does the word sedition mean? Let's go into the entomology of that word. Sedition, right? <clears throat> now it says it says rebellion then it also says civil or religious disorder riot rebelliousness against authority and that's what's happening you have the tribe of Manasseh but you never hear anything about about Manasseh ever, really. They're going at the government. This is sedition. This is future prophecy. We're in the times of the prophecies. Now, like I said, Yahweh Shah said in diverse places. You never hear anything about Cuba. Nothing. Now, all of it out of nowhere, you have upwards of the people. And trials and tribulations going down, going down in Cuba. You never hear anything tragic going down on the island of Cuba. Now we do. That's a diverse place. That's how you know we're at the end. It's just for there shall be sedition among sedition among men and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall be a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. So that's what's going on. Let me jump down to verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And what do you th and don't you think that's happening, especially down there in Haiti? You don't think people are invading each other right now? Home invasions for food. That's coming to America. Because no food, people are going to be, be hopping in your window, kicking your door down, doing all types of stuff so that they can eat. Because remember, we're in America. Americans, man, they, they're, uh, they're prone to eating, to eating a lot. They can't go an hour without eating. Yeah, so that's what's going on. So we got to continue to be diligent, pray to the Heavenly Father, and, you know, more curses on this place, man, because I'm sick of this place. But with that being said, Shalom.